Okay, see, uh, I'm Professor Emeritus at the University of Louvain. I'm Emeritus basically means that I'm retired. So I start doing research uh, in, on special issues, especially urban issues, many, many years ago. I mean, actually, I start my dissertation, PhD dissertation, in uh, 50 years ago this year. And by the time, there were few people interested in what we call urban economics. You know, those issues were mainly studied by geographers. And what, I, what was interesting to me was to see that what could be the economic justification for the existence of cities? Why do we have cities? People may say this is something obvious, there is no need for you know, a sophisticated analysis of that. This is not that simple. We have very big cities, like the metropolitan area of Tokyo, with a bit more than 30 million people. But then we have very small villages with 500 people. Why do we have so big differences when we talk about cities, medium-sized cities, very big cities, then you have areas, you know, like New York, say the metropolitan area of New York, you have the Greater Paris, which is about 11, uh, 11 million people in France, but Tokyo, by comparison, is much, big, much bigger. So that's something we would like to try. That's typically a multidisciplinary issue, but my my belief, my guess when I was a student, and I'm now really convinced about it, is that economists can say something interesting about why we have cities. That's a difficult issue. Eh? What we have is what we call the urban hierarchy. So some very big cities and then medium sized and smaller and smaller cities. Now, the issue is that uh, if we go back, let's say 50 years ago, which, which is short from the historical viewpoint, the small cities were able to do fairly well for the people who live there because they had a, a very small manufacturing sectors that produce basically for the region. Transportation costs nowadays are so low compared to what they used to be from the historical viewpoint that many of these small factories have just disappeared I mean, from the economic space. As a result, for the people who were, who were born and grew up in these small, in these towns, right, as we call them in English, then it's difficult to find a job where they, you know, nearby. And so they have to commute more and more to bigger cities, which tend to be relatively far. In other words, this means a long commuting in the morning, sometimes one hour. They go by car because, you know, build heavy highway, a railway, having you know mass transit is too expensive for small places therefore they commute by car they pollute which is not great news it's not fun to drive for one hour to go uh, to go to work and it's expensive and actually when you ask people what they dislike most is commuting they hate commuting so if on top of it they have to pay more you know for commuting they get very unhappy and that's why you see that in the US, in the UK, uh, in France and in other countries that a lot of people who live in this small place from the political social viewpoint tend to be, uh, they, they, they have the feeling that they are left behind what's going on. Because most of the economic activities, you know, the, the growing economic activities now tend to develop more and more in big cities. So we have this widening gap between these small cities which were prosperous in the past and this now fast growing big metropolitan area, which are expensive, especially, you know, housing is expensive in those places. This is especially true in some countries where housing regulation is very tough. And this is what it is in many European countries and also in some uh, American cities. We have maybe too much housing and land regulations. Yes, I mean, this is an issue, right? For sure, it would be a complete nonsense to say that we make no pollution. Po pollution is a critical, critical issue of our time and for the future and for the next generation. So. Uh, it's a fact that transportation activities, all transportation activities for good commodities, people, passengers, whatever, generate a lot of CO2, right? So we have to do something. Now, 
the idea that we can produce energy at most at no cost with this renewable technology, renewable energy, we have to be a bit careful about that. What do I mean? I mean that, yes, we must try to avoid using too much gas. Yes, nuclear power plants is an issue, but saying that we can produce energy almost for free, I think this is totally hopeless. Energy has always been at the center of all society, including the very old society. Actually having slaves in a society was a way for the non-slave people to produce energy. The, the energy produced by the work of the slave, right? So this is a very old problem. So when we talk about the new technologies to have, you know, we have to be a bit careful because, you know, this new technology use what is, what is called the rare metals. Now, to extract these raw, this rare metals from rocks, right, generate itself a lot of pollution. So what we need is to do a cost-benefit analysis in which we see how much we may gain by using these new technologies, but how much pollution is going to generate too, because at some point, you know, if we have more and more electric cars, we will have more and more batteries, and one day or another, these batteries are dead. And what are we going to do with millions of dead batteries? So that means that we must do a lot of research to recycle some material, a lot of research, but also to imagine another way to attract people for this kind of job, because what we live today is a new industrial revolution. And a new industrial revolution is a big shock to people. Thank you.